Welcome to this week's Career Wise. Choosing whether to go into management or to base your career within the classroom is one of the big decisions facing the teaching world today. We look at both options and offer you some excellent advice to get you where you want to go. If it's the fast track to a headship you're after, we speak to one ambitious young teacher and his very special mentor. To discuss the subject further, we'll be joined in the studio by one of the nation's youngest head teachers, Liz Robinson and Chris Foster from the ATL. Then we'll talk to Liz Lawrence, who after deciding management wasn't for her, developed her classroom career. Is there a better way we could measure from there to there? Yeah, get another room. Go on then. I'm a teacher, I'm not a manager. A recent survey by the GTC found that over a third of head teachers plan to retire within the next five years. This could be good news for younger teachers wanting to go for headship quickly. To hear from one who's doing just that, the intrepid CareerWise team jumped in the action bus and headed for Barnsley. Twenty-nine-year-old Ian Goddard embarked on his teaching career six years ago and has already become assistant head teacher. Ultimately, in two, three, four years' time, I will be ready to move on onto a headship somewhere. I would like to be a head teacher. Since arriving at the school a year ago, Ian has been mentored by his head teacher, Pauline Hilling Smith. I've had in the last five years then, uh, Ian will be my third deputy um, and I'm recognised within the authority and that really pleases me as someone who develops potential leaders. And I'd seen this job advertised and I'd come down to have a, a quick informal visit uh, and a walk around to see what I felt at the school. And normally it takes 20-25 minutes to walk around the school. I stayed for about an hour and a half and through the conversation with Pauline talking about where I wanted my career to go and how she could support me. It was a good move for me to come to this school to further my career. Shall we go? We'll, we'll go through next week because... Uh... There was an element of succession planning in my mind as well. He was a person who would be as good as a deputy head within a very short period of time. I think part of the reasons I want to be a head teacher is uh, because of the head teachers I've had the opportunities to work with. I've seen what they've done uh, and the respect they've had, how they've been able to move a school forward. And that's something that really appeals to me, to be in a position where I can have an impact on the whole school. Ian is a potential fast track head teacher. He doesn't make any secret of that. Why should he? I don't make any secret of it either. Yes, he's ambitious and, and that's a fine thing to be. 30 seconds, get as many words as you can. How are you feeling? Good words there, nervous, I like that one. You might be feeling terrified, intimidated by the sheer size of the man. That's a brilliant one, James. Ian is an outstanding teacher, so those skills that he has as an outstanding teacher are a really good basis for the ones that you need to be an outstanding senior leader, which I'm sure he will be. I don't think I'm fit enough. From the start, we've had a very good understanding of, of what Pauline can do for me and, and where I want to go. She's invested an awful lot of time in me and we have a very good understanding as, as the way we both work. What do you reckon? Have I reckon I'm time? really fit, you know, Mrs Hilling. Well, I don't know, I think you need to come out every lunchtime. She's only just recently identified how good she actually is at growing leaders. She's done it because it's part, that's the way she is. And there we are, our first star pupil. Well done, Brandon. Yeah. I'm really, really proud of the fact that all these people have moved on into headship. People grow at different rates um, and so some people don't need as much experience as others and if they already have that certain cluster of characteristics, the drive and the energy and the ambition, then they don't need as much time. The class are really enjoying it, it's really nice that you're having a good week with them. If people wanted to, to seek out further opportunities to, to develop their career, it's important they talk to their, their head about it to find out what possibilities there are within the school because it may be that the head doesn't know you want those opportunities. Uh, and maybe more than happy to give you the opportunity. Um, also, as well as the head maybe being sad to see you leave, if they know that your next step is not possible within their establishment, uh, they will advise you on the best way forward. And it may be that you do need to, to change schools in order to do that. Yes, you get that awful feeling when someone's going to move on and you think, I've shot myself in the foot again. 
But in fact, that's a driver for me. <laughs> if I left, Pauline wouldn't necessarily be surprised uh, within the next two years. Uh, she is expecting it. She is building me up as a leader uh, and she's giving me all the qualities I need. The time scale it happens is down to, to me and Pauline and the opportunities that come my way. And should she lose me, she will have someone in place for me very quickly. Well, there's one teacher with a, a very direct and optimistic career path ahead of him. Joining me now in the CareerWise crypt are Liz Robinson and Chris Foster. Liz, you became a head teacher at the ripe old age of 29. Now, in the film, we saw that Ian had a, a very strong mentor. What if you're heading for that path, but you don't have someone figure like that in front of you? I came to the Fast Track program, um, and part of that was very good mentoring, which really gave me a huge boost in making the steps with my career. So I think if, if you're interested in leadership, the best thing to do would be to contact the National College, um, the NCSL, um, and talk to them about what you're interested in doing, and they will give you some guidance about the different training and development programs. And Chris, I mean, with so many more uh, younger teachers uh, having courses to go to if they want to become heads, is the whole kind of landscape at the top of a school changing these days? Well, they're calling it the demographic time bomb. Uh, and that means that the baby boomer generation are due to retire very soon. And what we can see is that there isn't the pool of people to take up the senior positions in school. It isn't just young teachers we want to attract into headship. It's also those people who come back into teaching. We've got also people who choose teaching as a second career and come later in life. They bring a wealth of skills. Uh, Liz, I mean, from, from personal experience as a, a very young head teacher, um, have, have you come across the occasional difficult dynamic with an older teacher? Everyone expected me to when I, when I was first appointed and everybody asked me that question of how I was going to cope with all these old lags, as people sometimes refer to them as. <laughs> um, you know, if you, if you went in as a 29-year-old head teacher um, with, with the wrong attitude, then I'm sure you, you, you may well have lots of difficulties with older members of staff or younger members of staff. So I think it's about what you do as a person. And very quickly people forget you know, how old you are, I think. They, they judge you by what you do. There, there must be a point though, Liz, now you've become a head teacher at quite a young age where you're thinking, well actually, do I stop progressing now? Is this it? I mean, how have your horizons changed? Are they still there? Yeah, um, absolutely. It's, it's a question I get asked a lot, what will I do next? Um, and certainly at the moment, my focus is very much on Surrey Square Junior School and you know that's where it will stay for, for the next few years because it's an enormous job and I would want to do it um, and do it very, very well. You sound like a Premiership football scotching those transfer rumours. Do I? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, maybe. <laughs> um, but certainly I'd be interested in you know, looking at different schools, maybe looking at a school in difficulty. I'm also interested in, in doing some work in, in secondary schools as well in the future. Um, but, I mean, it is, it's an exciting position to be in. I think there's lots of possibilities. Um, and, you know, I, like Chris, you know, I hope to have a, a career break, to have a family. So I'm hoping I'll be able to find, you know, flexible ways of working that I can combine those two things. Uh, a final bit of advice for someone thinking that uh, headship is the way to riches and glory if they're a young teacher, Chris? <laughs> well, it can be. <laughs> <laughs> um, some headships are very well paid. Um, others, I think we have concerns about, um, about the salary and currently that's being looked at. I think it's a very demanding job, it's a very complex job and it's a very big job. And there's a lot of discussion at the moment about in fact, whether it is too big and whether we ought to focus in a different way. I think this is going to be a very interesting time. OK, well, listen, thanks very much indeed to both of you for coming on CareerWise today. All this is very well, of course, if you want to become a head teacher. But what about if you want to develop your career within the four walls of the classroom? There are increasing opportunities, and one of them being the new chartered science teacher status. We went along to find out from one of the first of the bunch. Liz Lawrence is a science advisory teacher based at the Centre for Education in Barking. She travels out to primary schools in the borough advising science teachers on their practice. We're going to be looking at forces in stretched elastic bands and sliding tubs across the classroom for and having a bit of educational fun. After spending four terms as a deputy head teacher, 
Liz decided to return to the coal face. I think one of the main reasons I wanted to stay involved at a classroom level is because I do enjoy my subjects so much and the actual teaching. I'm a teacher, I'm not a manager. As an advisory teacher, I work with all the primary schools in the borough developing expertise and a lot of my job is actually working in the schools, working with teachers. All I want you to do during the lesson is just to sort of think about maybe things that I'm doing differently for how you'd have done them and what you might set yourself as a target to develop. What I try and offer to the teachers that I work with is a focus on their development. We're going to be looking at the forces in stretched elastic bands and investigating what happens when you pull the band back further without snapping it. So everybody pick up your band, stretch it and tell me what's happening. If you stretch it all the way out and then stop pulling and it pulls your hands back together, doesn't it? The best part of my job is working with anybody who, when, when the penny drops, and when you're following a line of questioning with them, you're giving them an activity to do, and suddenly you see the light bulb go on. When you're pulling it back, it feels like it's quite heavy. That's a good description of it, yes, because it's pulling hard. You've got to be enthusiastic about your subject. You've, you've got to generate that buzz. Oh, right back to the elastics, 22, isn't it? That went a long way. Oh! <laughs> so what's the rubber band doing to it? Liz's excellent classroom practice was recently recognised when she was awarded Chartered Science Teacher status. Wow. The important thing about the Charter is you don't just tick it off, hey, I've got that. It's about where are you going to go next, how will you continue that professional development. It's alright, who's writing it down? <gasps> Can you remember? Yeah. Go on then, you show me 12. I hope that the Charter will work for teachers who want to stay in the classroom because it gives additional recognition for that. It's something that they can use to demonstrate the validity of what they're doing in the classroom and to promote their professional development in that area rather than feeling that they've got to head off to the National College of School Leadership and get their MPQH and everything else. Is there a better way we could measure from there to there? Yeah, get another ruler. Go on then. One, two, three. A head teacher is a great job, but if it's not for you, there isn't just that one pathway through teaching. Have the courage to take a different route. They were all interested and engaged, and we were doing things, and they were a really great bunch of children. They all wanted to talk to me and tell me things. Yes, I did enjoy it. Thanks for doing the show. Thank you. Bye. Well, that's it for this week's CareerWise. If any of our topics have caused waves within you, then surf gently to our website for more information. The address is www.teachers.tv. Thanks very much indeed to all the teachers and our guests for sharing their experience with us today. We'll see you again next time.